Thank you, President Officer. Uh, I'm glad that the Cabinet Secretary in his contribution has reflected some of the comments and findings and, and recommendations that the Welfare Reform Committee has made, because <clears throat> I do think it's important that in any system um, we reflect dignity, fairness and respect. Now, I don't underestimate the challenges that lie ahead. Mistakes will no doubt be made. Not everyone uh, will be happy with every decision that's made. But I think at least if we start out with those basic principles and the, and the other five principles that the Cabinet Secretary uh, mentioned, then we are starting off in the right way. Uh, I was reflecting, presiding officer, that this might be my last contribution in this parliament, or at least one of, my, one of the last contributions. And in a sense, it's quite opposite because uh, just under 37 years ago, uh, just after the election of Margaret Thatcher, I left teaching to become a welfare rights officer. And for 15 years, I worked in many of the poorest communities in what was then the old Strathclyde area, dealing with the consequences of unemployment, of poverty and of deprivation and trying to help people through a very complicated uh, welfare benefits system. And one of the things that was frustrating day in and day out was just the way that people were treated. And they weren't treated with dignity and respect and there was certainly very little fairness. But the other thing, presiding officer, that I have been reflecting on is one of the things that the way that Strathclyde approached it, and indeed the other regional councils in Scotland, is it shows that if there's a political will and determination, that in spite of adversity and difficulties and limited budgets, and in those days, yes, certainly limited budgets and limited powers, many good things can happen if politicians are determined to make it happen. And in Strathclyde, not only did they invest in welfare rights officers to go out and to help the disadvantaged, they decided, for example, on the water referendum, they used their powers to the full effect to stop water privatisation. They had a social strategy for the 80s that concentrated and put resources in to the poorest communities and to give additional education resources in early years, which was groundbreaking at the time, and into schools in the poorest area and in home helps and in homemakers, working with families that helped to get the families out of poverty. But also in social work, we had an imaginative use of Section 10 and Section 12 monies in the Social Work Scotland Act that actually helped those families when the government benefit system was letting them down. And we had the very courageous decision, for example, to use limited powers and budgets to help uh, minors' families in 1984 during the minor strike, I, I could take much longer, presiding officer, but unfortunately I see I'm running out of time. So what I would draw from that is to say to the Cabinet Secretary that if you're determined to make a difference, then despite the obstacles in front of you, you can make a difference. You can make a difference for the carers. You can make a difference for families where children and women are, are living in poverty. You can make a difference for the disabled. It just depends on whether we are determined to give a priority to that. And, presiding officer, it does frustrate me that in leaving this parliament, that I have done well in the last uh, eight, nine years, as is every member sitting in this chamber, but my poorest constituents have not. And if we are going to make a difference in benefits, then we have got to follow through on the words that I agree with and show that by our actions, we will make a difference to those who are disadvantaged in our society.